We are pleased to have Colonel Yak Turian, the Director of the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Estonia, as our next speaker. The NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence held the first SICON in Tallinn, Estonia 11 years ago, and our efforts to host SICON US are in large part due to the amazing partnership that has been forged through the years. Ladies and gentlemen, the Director of the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, Colonel Jak Terian. We are, well, I would like to celebrate the four years of uh, wonderful partnership that we have with the uh, Army Cyber Institute. And I'd like to congratulate uh, Andy and his team for putting together another. Is this on? I can barely hear myself. You good? Okay. Uh, wonderful conference. Uh, I, I really like how the two conferences uh, complement each other and work together. We all know there is a proliferation of cyber conferences in the world. There is probably three going on right now, globally. Uh, SciCon and SciCon US do stand out. When I came to this job a year and a couple months ago, my first instinct about SciCon was, uh, the SciCon in Estonia was, well, oh, I need to steer it more towards the military side. Basically, I wanted to do the typical new commander thing that, well, you know, I'll, I'll yank the steering wheel hard before I understand what, am I, what it is that I'm, that I'm driving. Um, well, uh, my program committee convinced me that wait one cycle, wait one year, and I've, I've come to realize that uh, the military focus that I wanted to see in SICON Estonia is existing here in SICON US, so uh, our broader academic focus is, is right on the money. Uh, both of the conferences are very selective, call for papers based. So we do get uh, speakers, panelists that are prepared here. Uh, they have actually written a, a paper on what they, what they are speaking about. So that, that's, that's the essence of, of SICON. Oops. That looks like the a last year's top. slide deck. In 2007, the same. That, it really does. I, I, uh, yeah, that is last year's slide deck. <laughs> I, I I did send this year's. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll go slide less. You know, uh, uh, getting getting Air Force officer talk without PowerPoint. It's almost like you know asking Italian to talk with, with his hands behind his back. It's 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 not not easy, but I'll I'll do my best. Uh, 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 by the way, on the first, uh, when I was talking how we celebrate and congratulate, and uh, I had slides of uh, West Point cadets and Annapolis midshipmen uh, at SICON Estonia. Uh, and so we, we share a little bit of the same audience uh, as well, which is great. And I'm working hard to get my alma mater, the Air Force Academy, the U.S. Air Force Academy, to send their cadets in the coming spring as well. Now, uh, I heard Andy talk about uh, ACI, and uh, I, I saw so many similarities. It was it, it was great. We we do we are similar organizations, the CCD, COE, and ACI. There's one big difference. Uh, uh, CCD, COE is obviously very very international. We have 25 member nations, and there are eight nations in the joining process. We have, if you add the math, it obviously becomes bigger than the NATO already. There are more more nations. So uh, we have nations from outside of NATO, like Finland, Sweden, uh, Ireland, uh, also from uh, further out of the area, like uh, Australia, Japan, and Korea are in a joining process. So uh, we're really bringing together the multinational perspective on cyber. Now, where we are very similar with the Army Cyber Institute is the 360 degrees look. We are a small organization, uh, just over 60 people. Uh, we are similarly uh, divided into tech branch, the ops branch, strategy. We have a strong team of lawyers. Uh, so we, we do take similarly broad look all around on cyber. What is it that we've been doing in the past 12 years? Well, uh, it helps us that we are a think tank in NATO. We're not in a NATO command structure. We're not funded by NATO. So it's a voluntary group of nations coming together, funding us and, and manning us. So 
everything that we do also carries the disclaimer that we heard in the beginning of the conference here that the what we whatever what it whatever it is that we say or it doesn't reflect the official positions of nato or our member nations that gives us the academic freedom to push nato sometimes on on the comfort zone you all know the african proverb that when you want to go far you you well you want to go fast go alone when you want to go far uh, you go together 29 nations consensus based going together sometimes it is painfully slow now uh, we've had the pleasure uh, and fun to poke NATO in, in places where some nations or the entire NATO hasn't felt comfortable. Uh, after 2007 attacks on Estonia, uh, NATO started working on concept, the relations between cyber attack, Article 5, sovereignty. It took until 2014 to, to get it into NATO summit decision. Uh, Meanwhile, it was the center, the CCD COE, the, in our research papers and in our conferences where we pushed the idea that cyber is a similar domain, uh, new domain, but similar domain to air, land, and sea. And in 2016, NATO declared in the highest level in the summit declaration that cyber is a new domain of operations where we must defend ourselves just like we do in air, land, and sea. Our telemanual process, uh, which uh, pulled together a very wide pool of uh, cyber lawyers from around the world, it came to conclusions that some of our member nations did not like. However, it is the most authoritative collection of uh, cyber international law articles in, in the world. So. It is something to go by, even though not all member nations uh, uh, don't agree with everything that's that's written in there. Uh, offensive cyber. Uh, it, it took a while until all our member nations were comfortable with being associated with it. We couldn't wait. So for five years, we've been running, uh, we've been running uh, exercise crosswords, focusing on offensive side of cyber. We didn't call it like that. We called it penetration testing, red teaming, whatever, but offensive. This year, one of the major member nations, uh, defense minister made a speech in January, two weeks before our exercise that yes, our nation is sometimes doing offensive cyber as well. So we decided, okay, now it's time to come out. We, our exercise is focusing on offensive cyber. Uh, what, what I'd like to point out as a danger, uh, what I see uh, in uh, cooperation amongst the allies and in the like-minded nations in the world is a phrase that I, 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 uh, I take pride in coining, cyber has become the new intel. We all know that in Cold War era, sharing intelligence was, was very problematic. Uh, sometimes the closest allies, their intel agencies were the fiercest enemies and competitors. They wouldn't share data. Cyber, I hope it's on a way to better, but it is somewhat in a, in the same era that in the same area that we were not sharing enough data. I don't understand why. Sometimes nations feel embarrassed when their defenses got breached. Well, you know, if a well-funded and very smart and capable enemy breaches our defenses. We feel embarrassed, but when a complete wacko gets into a truck and drives into crowd, same way breaching all our intelligence defenses, we don't, you know, feel embarrassed. We talk about it publicly. So why is it that way? I don't understand. We there, there is something we, we we should change. We should start sharing meaningful data on uh, cyber attacks. Uh, there are many C's in our acronym, the CCD COE. The first one stands for cooperative. So cooperation is, is really the essence of what we do. Uh, we are a small center, just over 60 people, like I said. Uh, our strength is the 25 and growing number of member, member nations. So cooperation is, is something we need to push on. Uh, uh, I already mentioned several things that NATO has done. Uh, uh, 
uh, in, in cyber in their policy decisions. NATO first mentioned cyber in uh, their 2002 summit, but then it really took after the Estonian experience in 2007 when the, when the cyber verbiage in the NATO summit declarations became bigger and bigger. And I mentioned that 2014, uh, when uh, the, there was declaration of uh, cyber attack uh, being uh, subject of triggering uh, collective response, if meeting certain cr criteria, then 2016 uh, cyber uh, as a domain of operations and 2018 of NATO declaring that uh, NATO will incorporate cyber effects into its operations if they are voluntarily brought to the operations by, by the nations and NATO established also a cyber operations center in Mons, Belgium. Now where I'd le really like to have a slide and a picture, but let's, let's, uh, let's imagine a picture of 1929, uh, three that era aircraft flying over a town, which is Tallinn. And in the center of there, there is an old building, which is where the center of excellence currently is. Uh, so now when we, you have that picture, uh, let's, let's think about the air rights. Uh, as an as a Air Force uh, officer, I feel that was the golden era of air power. Uh, flying was fun. It wasn't fly by wire. It was a it was, um, little bit of crazy people, uh, men and women in leather jackets and long scarves going out there and doing their thing. While at the same time in uh, military headquarters and in uh, political headquarters, there was a lot of debates. There was debates, well, World War I aircraft made the appearance, but they didn't really have impact. Everybody realized it's, it's the new big thing. What do we do with it? Do we integrate into army and navy? Some nations had already established uh, separate air services. Some waited until 1947. Uh, uh, there was doctrinal talk targeting the moral and ethical aspects. What, what is a legal target for, uh, for air warfare? Uh, will air power win all wars of the future and there is no need for other components? Well, uh, doesn't it strike us as a very similar debate going on about cyber right now? All the similar topics, the legal, ethical, moral, doctrinal, uh, is it embedded in the services, the separate service? Every nation has its slightly different approach. So does it mean we're living in a golden era of cyber when it's fun? It could be. I hope it is. So we'll, we'll know 30 years from now looking back what, it, what, it, what it's like. Um, and now I'm actually glad I don't have the slides because this last, last slide, I, I hate the photo of, of me announcing the next year's uh, Psycon Estonia theme. Uh, but but uh, people keep putting that back in the slide deck. So. Uh, the next, uh, the, the spring Psycon theme is uh, uh, 2020 vision, the next decade. We used to take the play of words, and here in America, I don't have to explain what 2020 vision means. Uh, it turned out that uh, the European colleagues, for them, it's like a quarter pounder. Uh, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's easier here. Uh, 2020 vision, uh, the next decade, I hope to see you all. Uh, in uh, last week of May in Tallinn, uh, which is the best chance statistically to have good weather in, in Tallinn or those two days of good weather during the year. So uh, once again, congratulations, Andy. Uh, wonderful program, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing everything here. Thank you. <laughs>